kind of reconfigure the whole um, Twitch integration. Cool. Um, so what are we doing today? So we're now basically going to take a look at, um, so we did the whole thing with the particle in the box last week and um, kind of trying to figure out how can I kind of at least carve more time to just do more um, drilling on these or grinding on like actual exercises. But I'm looking into, you know, kind of to, to take a step forward and, and maybe not a step forward, but kind of like approach the whole thing from another angle right now and see, okay, so we've seen how you solve the Schrodinger equation, at least the very simple versions of it. How how do we get to the path integral, right? Because my my ultimate goal is just as a reminder for myself as well um, to try go try and um, understand entanglement from a path integral perspective. That is the ultimate sort of goal in here. Um, yeah. So what do I even start? How, so let's just, how do we go from Schrodinger to path integral? Like, or something like, you know, Schrodinger to path integral. So. Okay, so there's a Wikipedia page, which is gonna be definitely too complex Plex to go through, that would be my guess. God, but we can try to do that, and then see where that's where this takes us in terms of. Maybe there's a nicer. From path into grill. Hmm. This is from MIT. Path integral method. Maybe, okay, then maybe that's what we should, maybe that, that's a better one to go through. Oh, and they go through the harmonic oscillator. Awesome, cool, let's do that. Let's, let's bookmark these. Let's just bookmark these here and um, Cool. So let's just go through that. Um, so let me just double check. We're live, aren't we? I'm not so sure I have to actually log into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever, I'll set this up later. I just want to make sure that <laughs> on my life, I'll just go check Twitch quickly. Because now I change the certain systems. And certain systems. Yeah, 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 life, okay, cool. That looks good. Um, path integrals in quantum mechanics. We present the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics and demonstrate its equivalence to a stronger picture. We apply the method of the free particle and quantum harmonic oscillator, investigate the Euclidean path integral and discuss other applications. So a fundamental question in quantum mechanics is how does the state of a particle evolve with time? That is the, the, the determination, that is the determination um, of the time evolution of some initial state. Quantum mechanics is fully predictive in the sense that initial conditions and knowledge are the potential occupied by the particle is enough to fully specify the state of the particle at all future times. Um, okay, so uh, in the early 20th century, I derived an equation um, specifies how to spend instantaneous change in the wave function depends on the system inhabited by the state of depends on the system inhabited by the state in the form of the Hamiltonian. In this formulation, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian play an important role since their time evolution is easy to calculate. Um, 
a well-established method of solution after the entire eigen spectrum is known is to compose the initial state into the eigen basis, apply time evolution to each, and then reassemble the eigen states. Okay, so that's the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the this Hamiltonian formulation works in many cases in classical mechanics. However, the Lagrangian formulation is known to be equivalent to the Hamiltonian one. Thus, we seek an answer to the above question that relies on some analog of the Lagrangian action. Um, so Dirac made a mysterious comment to this effect, which later inspired Richard Feynman. Consider the trajectory xt between an initial point and a possible future point, let the transition probability amp transition probability amplitude be the inner product of the wave function. The transition probability amplitude uh, these be the inner product of the wave function in the Schrodinger picture of the particle evaluated at these two points. What does this mean? So the probability of transitioning to, to that state. I have still a hard time understanding sort of the physicality of, of inner products in general and, and things like these. Like that's still it's still a bit of a mystery to me mathematically why that why does this make sense um, at all. But that's something that I definitely like to dig into at some point. Feynman hinted at the equivalence of the probability amplitude and the exponent of the classical action of the trajectory. Where equivalence is not yet well defined, it was not until 1948 that Feynman, as a postdoc student at Princeton, formalized his connection. So Feynman presented a formulation of quantum mechanics based on this principle. So let a given trajectory xt be associated with the transition probability amplitude with the same form as that given by Dirac. Um, of course, by quantum mechanics, we cannot speak of the particle taking a, any well-defined trajectory between two points. Instead, we can only speak of the probability of finding the particle at these locations, which um, is related to wave functions. That is, all that can be determined is the relative probability of the particle taking one path or another. Okay, I mean, that kind of makes sense to me, just formally speaking. I'm not so sure I, I fully appreciate. It's not about understanding necessarily, but it's appreciating that that way of formulating a transition probability. That it transitions from one state to another. What's the probability that it transitions from that state to that state, right? And, and why inner product? Like that that's kind of something that so does the inner product have any physical meaning? That would be an interesting So the oh, so the inner product has the meaning related to the, to a projection of one vector into another vector. For true projection, the wave functions needed to be normalized. It's the integral. That's interesting. So it's defined as an integral. So I'm reading a book for beginners of the quantum mechanics. In one section, the author shows the inner product of two wave functions. I am wondering what's the significance of that product. I googled that. It's not called the probability amplitude, but that product could be complex. So does it tell any physical significance? So suppose you have some linear algebra background. Um, the most important thing you need to know is that the inner product has the same meaning of what you have learned in, in linear algebra class. The inner product 
has the meaning related to a projection of one vector onto another vector. So it is similar to the projection of a three-dimensional vector into another unit vector, which gives the result a. So the, the inner product can give you the length square of the wave function. So you can normalize your wave function by the condition this second allows you to show that two wave functions are orthogonal to each other, given by the conditional that the inner product evaluated to zero. Okay, so maybe that's got something to do with the fact that so you take the wave function, so you take the wave function at each of these two dot, dots, right? So if you do that, what well, you're essentially calculating is if, if that is if that gives you zero then you're probably saying because these wave functions are orthogonal right because that's the meaning of a zero there um then it means that it's impossible for this transition to happen huh but then wave functions being orthogonal this just god But it's, it's it's states, right? So it's the state that it's the two states. If these two states are orthogonal, this means they why why? So that would mean you wouldn't be ever able to transition to these states. Okay, that's interesting. So if we write a wave function as a linear combination of orthonormal wave functions, similar to a general vector in linear algebra, then we'll have the inner product. Yeah, the meaning of C is the probability amplitude of, of and it is a complex number in general. So the probability PN of the wave function is given by, mm -hmm. the meaning of C is very important when you learn how to perform measurement. Lastly, you should add two wave functions amplitudes together before you take the square, similar to adding the amplitude of two water wave functions. More precisely, if the new wave function is these, then the probability density of a position x is this. Note that a is a normalization constant given the condition that. Um, Okay, so the, the dot product, is, as you mentioned, is the probability amplitude of one state transforming into another. That's interesting, right? So that that is, a, okay, so that's definitely clarifying. So this is, but this is something that, um, and the possible feature point, let the transfer probability amplitude be, but in a product. But who defined that? Like who, so is it, it, it I understand that's something that Feynman kind of hinted at. Um, two points, you know, let the transition probability amplitude be the inner product of the wave function in the Schrodinger picture. Mm. <clears throat> of the particle evaluated at these points, Feynman hint at the equivalence of the probability amplitude and the exponent of the classical, no, what we hint that as the, the, there's an equivalence between these and then the exponent of the classical action of the trajectory. Okay, so there's this there's this equivalence that that it's probably what what we're gonna get into at some point, right? This I'm kind of happy with at the moment, but I definitely want to dig deeper into that. But okay, I'm I'm happy with the projection being sort of the interpretation of these uh, in, in the projection, but the way that you model this kind of stuff, so that that kind of makes a bit more sense. Um, Presented formulation quantum mechanics based on this principle. So there's a tr there's a bunch of trajectories. And then they associate it with the transition probability amplitude with 
the same form as that given by Dirac. Of course, by quantum mechanics, we cannot speak of the particle taking any well-defined trajectory between two points. Instead, we can only speak of the probability of finding the particle at these locations, which is related to wave functions. That is, all I can determine is the relative probability of the particle taking one path or another. Feynman's um, insight was this, the total transition probability amplitude can be obtained by summing the amplitudes of the particle having taken any individual path. Okay, so... Uh, ah, I see. So what Feynman is claiming is, in here, was claiming is that the, 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 the transition probability, right, to go from this state to this state can be um, can be calculated by adding all the amplitudes of the different hmm. of every single different given path. Okay. So if you sum the probabilities, like that seems to make sense, but it doesn't seem to be that obvious. Like, so the probability that I go from A to B is the, the sum of the probabilities that I go through each of the different paths, right? So, so if, if there's no path I can take, if all the, the probability that I take any possible path is just zero for all the paths, then kind of that makes sense, right? So it means that they, they have no chances to go from, from that point to another. But then, but that what, what's awkward in this definition is that it seems like what you're saying is that the addition of all the different paths doesn't have to be a total of one, which is what's confusing here, right? Because you imagine that if there is any chance that you go through any of the paths, that that, that is going to be one at some point, right? Um, but maybe I'm reading these wrong. Because you kind of have to go one level up, speaking in terms of like sort of at the meta level and say like, well, the probability that I'm at that point in time, it's something you're comparing against all the other points I could be in that time. Right? Ah, okay, yeah, I get it. So I guess, so in, in a way, let me try to draw a picture, just see if that becomes a bit more clear. Let's open our friend paint. So, you know, kind of that's my initial state, right? And then I guess there's many points I could be in the future, right? I mean, it, it, it's almost really a continuum, right? If you just think about these as space and then like, you know, Maybe that's probably the wrong way to draw it, right? I just have to have them all at the same um, point in time. So that's like a slice. It's a point in time. So I could be in multiple places, right? That's that's the point. So maybe, you know, it's like th there's just a lot of paths that go out of, out of these kind of way, right? So, and, you know, I guess they could just go... Yeah, so there's, there's points in here where there's just no path going to, so that's why this will be zero, yeah. So it's the sum of all the path, of the probabilities of all the paths that, that actually lead to that, right? If if I've got like an equal amount of probabilities, then, you know, those will distribute here. I guess that's what that's what these, this is saying. So, which, which pretty much kind of reminds me really um yeah that is that is really similar to um to wolfram's feature right of of you've got your your multi-way hypergraph 
that tells you from that state you transition to that state, transition to that state to that state, from you know that state you transition to that state to that state to that state, right? So you kind of have you, you have your and, and if you take these as what they you know called it the foliations, right? And then you consider those being sort of the time slices. Basically, yeah, that's basically that's basically analogous to these. It's just discrete, right? It's not continuous. Um, So it's pretty, yeah. That that seems to be quite. There's 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 really an obvious, at least at an informal level, an, an obvious equivalence to these, right? Um, so. Uh, I want to spare you my sneezing. <laughs> I almost feel like I have got to sneeze, but I can't. <laughs> anyway, that is, all that can be determined is, is the relative probability of the particle taking one path or another. Fa okay, but so we're 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 talking about we're talking about paths. I'm going slow on purpose, right? Because it just I just want to make sure I process these. Like, um, so what's different between the path integral and the Schrodinger feature is. So in the Schrodinger picture, you have you have a Hamiltonian that kind of encodes how the system, how the state is evolving. That's why what you what you're doing is if you have your initial state and you apply this Hamiltonian operator, now you are at the next state, right? So now what's the probability of you measuring a specific outcome here is you and, and now that's when you've got to project these. Uh, that's why the inner product works. Right? Now you do the projection of like I want to know I want to know it, you know what's the probability of being in the state zero, for example. So I do that projection. Yeah. And that's why the, the inner product works well, because the inner product is going to tell me, for example, if it's zero, it's going to tell me that I'm, there's no way that I'm in that state, right? So, so that's the Schrodinger way. But then that, that, and that's what we're getting rid of, that, the bit here. It, instead of that, we're doing some sort of sum or integral, right? Across these paths. But I don't know what is it that we're, like, should, shouldn't one just like slice that into, into smaller steps and then kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. So finds insights that the total transition probability amplitude can be obtained by summing the amplitudes of the particles having taken an individual path. If the quantity can be calculated in the method suggested, the time evolution of the state can be determined by considering contributions from all possible future states. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's so. So the conclusion here is then you can define your own kind of Hamiltonian uh, by just kind of adding up all the different contributions to to like. Yeah. So you would say the probability that it's in this state, in this state, in this state, in this state, and then you kind of sum up all the things together, and then you kind of have your time evolution, right? Um... Below the cats are eigenstates of the position operator such that integration over all x spans the entire basis. Okay, so what is it? So okay, so what 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 is this telling us? So the state, so the the, the wave function at a point of of position at a point t prime t t tilde whatever equals the integral. Of what? What are we integrating here? Okay, so for a, a small change of position, I don't know why this has the tilde here. Oh yeah, because it's 
that that's that's this here. So we have. Uh, okay, so so what this is saying is actually do that projection. Yeah, that's that's what I that's probably that, that's kind of what I mean here. So so do that projection for like a, a very small interval of x and remember this. Oh, sorry. No, what am I doing? That's time. Shouldn't we just be doing these through time? Why are we integrating over position? I mean, okay, yeah, so we're calculating a, a time prime. So we're calculating, let me try to draw a better picture, just kind of more focus on, I'm here and sort of, if this is position, no, so I, I know physicists represent time vertically. I've learned that recently. <laughs> so we'll do time vertically. So this is time, this is position, right? And so I know I know I am here. Let's say I'm in a well-defined state, right? And at time like t prime, my position is going to change, and it can be like that I'm here, here, or here. Kind of, I'm just I don't know. I'm I'm really guessing, right? So you have these these, these uh, potential different paths. I don't know. There's no real dual path because that 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 is so small. But that's the thing. We're integrating over small small position intervals. That's what I'm. That's what is confusing me a little bit right now. Because you're rather you're rather talking about like when I'll be there. You know what I mean? Yeah, which kind of makes sense because you want to know, will I ever be there, right? Will I ever be there? So you're saying Uh, yeah. So you're you're going and saying for each for each little little change in here in position, and I'm just imagining position is just one dimensional in this case. For 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 that for 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 the the the, the dx right. And and. Because the thing is, because the thing is, you might have, you might have. So this is this is x at t zero, x at t prime. Is this one like x at like say t prime prime is like maybe you know what what I'm saying is like the position. You know, you might have a superposition of this of 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 your position. Right, of the state, and so, so each of these points is going to have a, a sort of a dx like associated to them, right? So you're saying you, for each, and so you're taking that final state, and you're doing a projection on. No, the integral is because the integral is just like until here, right? It's confusing me. The formulation is confusing me in terms of is this bounded on on position. So are we doing like why why are we using the same x prime notation here where we uh, 
Ah, so you're taking a look. I'm I'm just having just trouble reading these, right? It just I'm not used to the. Um, so, so we're looking at a state. We're looking at the wave function. We know the wave function at time t prime, right? The and and we know that these can be yeah. So we know that at time okay. So we know that at time t like say like or this is t zero t one uh, sorry t one t two and there's going to be t three right? But let's say we're taking like a t two. A t2. So we're going to take a t2, then we have multiple possible x primes, right? For example, let me change color. So so we have this guy here and this guy here. Of course, these these have an associated interval, right? So we're, what we're doing is, or yeah, you're projecting each of these and basically But how how is that? Uh, I don't. I'm I'm not. So I know the integral in this case is is like you can read that as the sum, right? I'm just. Um, it's another kind of mental blockage that I have. That I'm not so sure how. Like, what's the role the integral is playing here? Um, I'm, I'm just basically kind of pretty much blocked um, just by by understanding the exact like what what is what is that that the that this is telling me right and just I, I get it conceptually that what we're doing is we're calculating. We're adding these projection things, right? Because essentially, when we're when you're doing integration, I might just have to go back to the basics, right? But that, that's what you're doing: integration of a normal function of a classic. Or it's just like, say, you have a constant function, right? X equals Five. Oh, um, f of x equals five, right? Like the integral of these is is equivalent to calculating the area under the function, right? So you're saying what is the yeah? I think that's that's very basic, but that's That's what that's what's that's what's confusing me here is this integral. Known as the path integral from relation quantum mechanics, the method gives the same results as those dictated by the Schrodinger picture, but also eliminates some of the deeper aspects of quantum mechanics. In this paper, we will present the method used by Feynman. Though it is pedagogically backward, we will then demonstrate the use of the method before showing its equivalence to Schrodinger picture. We will then investigate the method as applied to the harmonic oscillator. Following these, we will introduce the concept of Euclidean path integrals and discuss further issues. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the propagator thing. But let's let's stick to this a little bit more. I, I know because I also don't have you know more, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to schedule longer sessions because now it's getting a, a bit more. I want to be able to have longer time spans where I focus on these things. Um, but that's, yeah. Let, let's start to dig a bit more into it. I just want to make sure I understand, I understand this a bit more in terms of what is it that we're doing? What is it that we're integrating? Because what is it you're integrating? That's not a, <sighs> How do we integrate a wave function? 
Like, what does it mean to integrate a wave function? Well, especially, what is it, like you're not integrating a wave function. You're you're integrating the inner product of a wave function, and the inner product of wave function. This is color, isn't it? Integrate in a product. Like inner product integral. So there is something. The integral form of inner product. I want to know how scientists know that the inner product of f and g equals to the integration <laughs> I like that it's a definition <laughs> shut up <laughs> and the guy's like oh there must be a way to derive that right yeah okay cool let's let's see because that that seems to be what I'm lacking right in terms of how do we know Or not, that's not maybe it. I, like, it's what's called the inner product integral. It's what's called the inner product integral, and it works like this. Its definition for periodic signals is that A equals uh, 1 divided by T times the integral over one complete period. And I'm just going to do integral. No, that's not, that's not, that's definitely not the, the stuff that I'm looking for. How do you integrate a vector product? Okay. So I'm given, uh, my book says that integrating these with regards to time gives. Uh... So I assume that here is a cross product, which is around, uh, if you have two vector functions, what is it? What are vector functions? So with values in R3, then you can form the cross product. This is again a vector function. Maybe I'm having a hard time understanding what this is. It's an inner product of two wave functions. That's going to give me a scalar, isn't it? It's a transition probability. I don't get it why it's an integral, right? That is... Or is it that the integral is the whole, the whole thing? Ah, maybe the integral is the whole... I don't get it. Maybe I just have to go ahead, but that's what's com that's confusing me. That is the... Unless, unless what that's telling me is, do the inner product, it's confusing, this is confusing me, as in like, is this part of the integral or not? Like, Wikipedia path integral formulation. Oh, actually, I think I had it open already. OK. 
Okay, that goes too much directly into the exponential notation, which that's not that's not what's gonna. So one way to to read that integral would be you calculate you calculate the probability. So you calculate the probability of each of these points, the transition here, this is each of these points for like a, a small delta, the small delta x, or the, the whatever the, the, the dx that actually represents that. And what you're integrating is then that. So you do that and you're doing the, and that is a scalar, right? Times, because that's then the probability, uh, okay, of being in here, right? So yeah, so indeed, actually, that must be part of this. It's just a weirdly formulated. I thought, I, I don't know why is this something you put in here and not at the end, for example, right? Because then you, you, you multiply that by this wave function. And so, and then you're doing the integral across time, position, position, I guess. You do that for all the different positions. It's a bit confusing. It's indeed a bit confusing. Let's see. Let's see if we get a bit more maybe practical down here, right? So we get the path integral method and then you define the propagator of a quantum system between two space-time points. Okay, so we're we're working at in space-time here. But be careful with this. To be with the probability transition amplitude between the wave function evaluated evaluated at these points. What is it the wave function evaluated at these points? Okay, so what the value is Um, so you so so this is the propagator and you give it an x prime and t prime and an x zero and a t zero and that is that is exactly that is the Schrodinger way right so you do the inner product so you kind of project one one to another um So you know what the probability is that you transition there. You know, you, you know the points and the space time. And so if the inner product gives you zero, it means that you're not you're not gonna be able to project you're not projecting, so they can project on onto each other. So you, so there's no chance. Yeah, I still have like a hard time with this projection thing, but okay, let's assume that it's uh, uh, let's assume it's true. And then, if the Hamiltonian carries no explicit time dependence, we can relabel the first time value t zero and work only with elapsed time t prime minus t zero. What? So we will often write three as just that to illustrate this. The propagator above, along with an initial state, can fully describes the evolution of a system over time. It is also custom or customary, as is done in uh, Sakurai, to, to use here the simple k instead of u and refer to as the kernel or the, Fein the Feynman kernel. The path integral method, as we are about to see, is an explicit way to construct this propagator. We, we consider possible trajectories xt of a particle moving forward in, through a time-independent potential with endpoints fixed at x0 t0 and x prime t prime. An infinite continuum of such trajectories is possible, each with classical action i gotta revisit the action stuff yeah so Feynman points posits that the contribution to the propagator from a particular trajectory is 
these. That is, every possible path contributes equal with equal amplitude to the propagator, but with a phase related to the classical action. Okay, that is getting interesting. Summing over all possible trajectories, we arrive at the propagator. The renormalization constant is independent of any individual path, and therefore depends only on time. Okay, so this is where we kind of move from these thing to like these exponential thing here. And we don't understand again what the action is. I, I dicked into this before. So the action is kind of, is what your system will naturally try to minimize, right? Something like that. So of course, each path has an action associated to it. And like minimal actions will have higher probabilities to be, to be the ones that are taken, I think, something like that. Okay, so actually we're going to the classical action here a bit more. How can it be that infinite sum of both does not diverge? The different phases are key to these. Okay, so that's gonna be have to do with interference, I guess, but like infinite sum above does not diverge. Let's try to understand why you would even ask this question to yourself, right? Uh, step back a little bit, try to understand the propagator more. There's a probability transition amplitude between the way the propagator is the probability transition amplitude between the wave function evaluated at those points. So the propagator is defined as in something that is associated to two specific points. I kind of keep keep coming back to these to this way of expressing that below the kids are eigenstates of the position operator such that integration all over x spans the entire basis so you're integrating over x Let's remember what is psi of x t is okay. So that's a wave that that's that's how is the wave function? I mean, the wave function is these, right? That's the wave function. It's telling you kind of for each x and t, what is the uh, is it? Because I'm coming, I'm coming from a pure quantum computing background perspective. You just say that's psi, right? But it's not as a, it's not a function of anything. That's just psi, and then you have your basis states, right? Here, the basis is the position of progression over x spans entire basis. I guess the way of reading psi of x t prime is uh, that that this is a wave function whose components are the eigen states, right? So the the possible definite values that this could take, and then they have that um, complex amplitude associated to it. Mm. I see I'm kind of like burning my fingers a little bit probably with these um, at the moment. Uh, 
I'm, I'm kind of lacking a solid understanding of of how you how you go and read these just coming from a you know a more strictly kind of pure quantum computing perspective where you just have more abstract you know you have a system of you know n qubits and then you have like two to the power of n basis states and then um talking about a psi of x it's what's confusing me a little bit here doesn't allow me to understand this better and that kind of confuses me as well so i need to stick into these a bit more work i guess so but i guess i'll leave it here so what have i it it, it seems to it kind of makes sense but i i can't really make i can't really appreciate the details these the projection kind of thing i understand And this is confusing me a little bit. I mean, you're kind of reconstructing, if I would understand this as a sum, right? You're kind of reconstructing. You're reconstructing the wave function at like a given point, you know, x, prime t prime if this is like t prime and this is like x prime right by saying that um that you're you're integrating over all x right no, that's 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 wrong. That's not where that's not what you're doing. That is just not that that's just a wave function. So how is it the wave function at t prime? So at this point in here. So what is the well, you know what is the wave function? You're defining t prime, right? Right. But then you're saying what is the wave function here? So how you know how does it look like across the different x points? And then so what we're doing is you're you're calculating the amplitude the amplitude that you're in each coin uh, and then and then multiplying it as you know that that's the that's that would be then an amplitude for for these as these being the basis state right so if you, if if each if each position is part of the basis then you're calculating the probability that you're here. No, the, the, what is the complex coefficient that you're here, the complex coefficient you're here, the complex coefficient you're here. And that gives you that wave function. But I don't know why, what is the integration that you're doing? Like, mathematically speaking, I understand that it, it means just consider every single point in this continuum, right? Because position is continuous or is understood as continuous. So that's what you're doing, like from plus, minus infinite to plus infinite. Um, And that's why it's an integral, not a sum, right? Because it's uh, and and that's of course a really small interval. And if you do that, then you know. Yeah, but essentially that's just saying it's just formalizing what is being said here but it's not clear how how do you kind of go about calculating this like for some reason the equivalence between you know uh, the the sum and the integral makes sense but it's still it's just i know it's probably just notation but it's just it's just still coming hard on me like as in like what is the integration part what does it mean if i want to do these like what, what what what's this how do i calculate the integral of how do i integrate yeah integral sums integrals like i gotta dig into this it's just basic math i guess but
Yeah. And then you do this propagator thing where the propagator is just a very specific, so the propagator is just taking then a specific point in time, right? Two specific points. And so what Feynman's saying is that that there's trajectories and then a trajectory has an action associated to it. And then each action contributes to the propagator. In that form. So that, that what's Feynman's claiming, right? So it's like the action being S, so the, so so this is the way that this contributes. Okay, so now uh, sort of the next challenge is how the how the hell is that? How do you you know derive that, right? So how do you how do you how do you get here? Oh, here we get a sum of all the trajectories. Why here you get a sum and, and like not an integral, right? Cool. I mean, I get, I, I kind of get that a little bit more. Let's try to understand a bit more how does the action play into these. We'll do that in the next video. Bye bye.